Now, it's World Suicide Prevention Day, and medical experts say suicide is a worrying, growing global phenomenon. In fact, according to the 2019 Global Health Estimates report, South Africa has a suicide rate of about 23 per 100,000 people. The global average is 9 per 100,000. The South African Depression and Anxiety Group says that as many as one in five 18-year-olds have had attempted to kill themselves one or more times. For more on this, we take uh, talking this morning to Megan Hosking. Uh, she is, of course, uh, talking to us about this very worrying um, phenomenon that we are singing, seeing she's from the Crisis Line and Marketing Manager at Netke Ake. So good morning, Megan. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start perhaps with the local statistics when it comes to suicide and how it compares to the global um, trends that we are seeing. Yeah, so I mean, first, our, our, our statistics are coming from 2019, which is pre-COVID. So we could expect that those would likely be a little bit higher at the moment. But in South Africa, we're seeing 23.5 per 100,000 people reported, which equates to around 14,000 people every year in South Africa that are dying as a result of suicide, compared to the global average, like you said, of nine per 100,000, which is a massive, massive difference. Um, we're also seeing that extend to our neighboring countries. So um, our neighbors like Botswana, Namibia, Zimbabwe are also seeing high, high numbers like that. Um, what's really frightening is if you look at it on a worldwide scale, we're seeing sort of 700,000 to a million people die every year from suicide, which works out to be about every 40 seconds that someone in the world is taking their own life. And speaking of that, Megan, we as the people in their lives who are wanting to give support, sometimes we say the wrong thing, not understanding the environment that this person who's feeling suicidal at the moment and feels like dying is the only answer and end, as it were, to solving the current problem or circumstances. What should we mind saying to people who are feeling this way? What should we rather say to encourage them and to get them out of that dark place. Yeah, it can be very challenging when someone we love is experiencing that, especially if you don't really understand it. So what we notice is that a lot of people may come with a good intention, but the words don't come out right. And that can be very damaging to someone who is in a fragile space and is feeling overwhelmed. Um, so we really need to encourage people to come forward with a space of non-judgmentality. They need to be open and try to be understanding. They need to come with empathy. So not feeling sorry for the person, but trying to understand what they're going through. And perhaps asking a question, saying something like, I understand that this must be very hard for you, and I'm sorry that you're going through this. What can I do to help you? A lot of people have the misconception that speaking to someone they love about suicide may contribute to them wanting to act on it. And that's just not the truth. We need to have these conversations because the majority of people do come forward and do reach out to someone they love if they're struggling with suicidal thoughts. So that's why we need to have these conversations and we need to create a safe space with the people around us where they can feel comfortable to come forward and where we can ask those tough questions and understand from someone what are they dealing with, what are they feeling, what are their plans, and then we can know how swiftly we need to act and what we need to do. As someone who has struggled with suicidal thoughts myself, Megan, I believe this is a very important conversation. And as you just uh, highlighted, it is so important for our family members and our friends to really support us. I find it interesting that I read that men and boys are the most likely to actually complete um, the suicide uh, uh, step. Why do you think that is? So a lot of the time it's because men are generally going to choose a more aggressive uh, option for a method of suicide compared to women, which then means that that is more likely to be completed, whereas women may attempt, but it may not be a completed suicide. Um, there's also a, a challenge because we know that the statistics in terms of uh, men getting help is lower than women getting help. And that's largely due to the stigma, still the old adage of, you know, boys don't cry um, and men just not being as open to have those conversations. Um, but also it largely depends on the factors that are contributing to that space. So if, for example, um, it's a financial stressor, you may find that the man of the household may experience that differently to the woman. 
Um, and so the conversations aren't happening as much in that in that area. And then they are unfortunately choosing the more aggressive methods, which is, is leading to the higher rate of completion. Now, Megan, we know that there's something called the 21 days inpatient therapy uh, for someone who is feeling suicidal. Please take us through how it works and how someone who's watching us right now and hearing this conversation uh, may be helped. Sure. So there's lots of options for someone who may be feeling suicidal or, or just feeling like they're not doing, um, they're, they're not being themselves, they're not being their best version of themselves. At Akeso, we do offer inpatient therapy, and that is basically um, a safe space for someone to come into and get mental health treatment. So normally it's in a combination of psychiatry, so medication, psychology and occupational therapists, different talk therapies and activities that basically work together with you as the individual to find a way to get you back to where you want to be. So uh, we'll look at a combination of, of different treatments and normally those things will then be suited to your individual needs. So if you are suicidal, there are lots of medications that can assist with that. We would look at treating what's contributing to the underlying suicidal thoughts um, and how do we then to help you manage those long term so that that no longer seems like an option to you. Megan, we've unfortunately run out of time, but I do want you to just within a, a few seconds, look at the seven potential warning signs that a person could be suicidal, just so that we as family and friends can be informed. Yeah, a lot of the time we're able to see that someone around us is struggling, even if they're not saying it. Uh, so we would look for any kind of low moods, uh, feelings of hopelessness and feeling like they have no other option. Uh, we're seeing changes in energy levels and withdrawing from the people around us. Uh, so, so being more isolated and less social. And then you would look for the obvious signs, such as someone talking about that death would be a relief to them, uh, that they may be a burden and feeling like they're a burden to others and then looking for options like talking about suicide, talking about uh, access to lethal means to harm themselves, and uh, those thoughts of actually harming themselves. Uh, we also would just look for any changes, people who are normal, uh, so that you can be aware that something may be going on with a loved one, because even if it's not necessarily suicidality, we need to control and manage the mental health space in, as a whole, so that people are less likely to end up feeling like that's where they need to go when they're out of hope. Thank you so much. That, of course, Megan Hosking, Netcare Akeso Crisis Line and Marketing Manager with that very, very important conversation this morning.